Justice Hooney versus Kevin Lorena. 10 rounds in the heavyweight division this Friday. This is happening on the Anthony Joshua Francis and Ganu card. Let's get into it. Let's start with the Australian. Eight wins, no losses, four wins by way of knockout. You know, truthfully, I've seen Hooney fight live probably about twice. Right. And that was the first one was when he fought Joe Goodall and his most recent fight against Andrew Tabiti. I think Hooney has a lot of upside, man. I really do. I think he's quick. I think he's strong, good combination puncher. He's got good footwork. Uh, he's got quick hands for a heavyweight. He's athletic as well, too. And you can, I think you can kind of see all that when he turn on the tape. And you can also see that he's still learning, still developing inside of the rings. I mean, this is his ninth fight, right? So he's still developing at the professional setting. When he fought Joe Goodall, man, I... I was really curious to see how he was going to be able to handle the volume, how he was going to handle that pressure and that come forward type of style against him. I was also curious to see how his power would carry going on to those championship rounds, right? Those, those, those rounds seven, eight, nine type of rounds when pressure is on you. Because we know Goodall is an aggressive, come forward type of fighter, always in your face, always going to try to let his hands go. And for the most part, I thought Hooney was in control of that fight. I thought he did very well. I thought he did a good job of not over committing his shots. And he came forward with powerful, consistent punches. He went to the head, went to the body, didn't neglect any part of the body. I thought he countered well as well, too. And he slipped in some shots that I didn't think that he would be able to do as quickly. You know, from in close, it's hard to slip in an uppercut. From in close, it's hard to slip in an uppercut and then come through with the body shot. And he was able to do that. So it kind of showed me that, man, this guy has a lot of variety and he can take a punch as well, too, because Goodall, man, he, he, he caught him with some nice, flush, clean shots that landed cleanly on Hooney's chin, right? I felt like throughout that fight, too, Hooney was headhunting quite a bit, right? And he wasn't always set on, setting up his shots. He was neglecting the jab in some rounds, but he was able to get away with some of those things because of his natural athleticism, his technique. And against a top heavyweight, right, some of those mistakes that he was making would have got himself in trouble and would have got exposed a little bit. But again, still developing only eight fights going into his ninth fight. So you got to give uh, them a little bit grace as they're developing. But overall, man, I thought it was a good performance against Goodall. In his most recent fight, he fought Andrew Tabiti and he won that fight pretty convincingly, right? Hooney took over the fight in the second half of the fight. I felt like early on, Tabiti did a good job of pushing the pace and trying to impose his physicality and not lying down and being a sitting duck and just coming in that fight just to get a check, man. He made Huni work to get that win, right? Huni is a guy who gets to you with, with volume and he outworks you, right? He's got good hand speed, probably quicker than most heavyweights in my opinion but he doesn't have a crazy amount of power behind his shot. Power isn't everything, but man, it's definitely something. So it's going to be interesting to see how he generates power, how he handles that moving forward. When you can't get your opponent off of you, man, that, that in the heavyweight division, that's not always going to work in your favor when the right guy could put you in a position that you don't want to be in. So we know we can box. We know he's got good footwork. We know we can take a shot because Tabiti hit him a couple times real cleanly. And I thought had him hurt a little bit in that sixth and that eighth round. But as I said, Huni's got a decent chin. Ultimately in their fight, Huni's hand speed movement was just too much for it to be. I'm always interested to see the improvement of heavyweight fighters, man, because especially the ones that have potential and that have upside. And so Huni is one of those opponents, right? He may not be as popular as a Jared Anderson, but he's got that kind of similar talent level. Maybe not the punching power, but man, he can still do some good things inside the ring. So I'm looking forward to seeing what version of him that we get in the progression because Kevin Lorena is going to test him. This is not an easy fight for him. It's a step-up fight for him. Is he going to sink or is he going to swim? And we're going to know on the night. Let's talk about his opponent, Kevin Lorena. 30 wins, two losses, 14 wins by way of knockout. Kevin Lorena. Whenever I think about Kevin Lorena, man, my first thought goes to Daniel Dubois. You remember that fight? First round went off. Lorena dropped Dubois with an overhand left hand that landed like right on his temple, right on his head. And Dubois went down. 
right? I remember thinking to myself, wait a minute, the fight hasn't even started yet and Daniel Dubois is already on the canvas. And then he was on the canvas for a second time and a third time. And I was thinking, like most of you were thinking, yo, what is going on? What's going on with Daniel Dubois? What's going on here? And it seemed like all the momentum was really starting to go into the favor of Kevin Lorena, but then he backed off of what he was doing. When he was coming forward, bringing the pressure, letting his hands go, and being the more physically imposing figure, he was having success, making Dubois fight off of the back foot. But he stopped doing that, stopped pressuring, stopped letting his hands go and gave Dubois space to work. Dubois is a guy who we know he's got good power, but he's also an underrated boxer as well, too. If you give him enough space to fight on the outside and to give him that little bit of mid-distance range where he can come in, use his jab, and use his feet to get out of the way and give him space to really sit down on his punches, man, generally that doesn't work in his opponent's favor. And then we start to see the debacle of Kevin Lorena. Once Dubois got comfortable and confident, Man, that's when Lorena walked into a right hand that dropped him. That's when he came forward and got clipped with an uppercut on the ropes and then got punched again. And right when the bell rang, he got dropped and the count started and it was over with. So things was working in Lorena's favor until it was not. Lorena definitely could have won that fight. But as the saying goes, coulda, woulda, shoulda, didn't. So we move forward. Coming into this fight, he's been on a two-fight win streak. Right In his most recent fight, he fought Sanad Gashi, uh, where he won that fight pretty convincingly right, by unanimous decision. And it reminded me a little bit of that Dubois fight. When Lorena is on the front foot coming forward, he's effective, he's calculated, and he's at his best because he can set up that left hand. He can use his physicality to his advantage. He can impose his size on you. It's when he's on the back foot, does things start to work against him. He's not the best counter puncher. He's a little flat footed. He doesn't move the greatest, right? But when he's on the front foot, man, he can really let that left hand go. He can use his jab to set up his shots that he wants to do. If he's on the front foot, that's when he's going to be at his best. And I remember when he was fighting Gashi, man, you know, he was coming forward and he let off like a lunging left hand looping shot that you have to have some athleticism to be able to do. And I didn't think Lorena had that type of athleticism, but it goes to show that, man, this is a tricky, crafty guy. Like this is a guy that you cannot take lightly because he fights with a lot of heart, fights with a lot of determination, a lot of will and confidence, especially if he's on that front foot. He's got sneaky athleticism to him. And if Huni isn't careful, man, he could really find himself in trouble in this fight. Now, Lorena did tire out towards the end of that fight. I felt like he took some rounds off against Gashi as well, too. And Gashi, in the last two rounds, really took the fight to Lorena. But it's just that Gashi was way more tired than Lorena was. Lorena might be tired, but he's still going to try and fight. He's still going to let his hands go. He's still going to be in your face. Gashi kind of retreated, in my opinion. So going to be interesting to see how this fight goes, man. This is a big fight for both men, so who wins? But right now, I'm leaning toward Justice Huni to win this fight by decision. Huni does not have a crazy amount of power, and that... Not that power is everything, as I said, but it is something. But you got to keep that in the back of your mind as you're fighting someone who can punch. Lorena can punch. But Huni does a great job of using his feet and using the things that does work, right? He boxes well. He moves well. He does a great job of not staying stagnant in one position, stays off the ropes, tries to keep things in the center of the ring. And I think his hand speed with the volume, I think, is going to serve him well in this fight. I think as long as he comes in and applies calculated pressure... He can box his way to a victory, but if he comes in with his chin up and thinks he can just walk through shots over shots and gets a little lackadaisical, man, I think Lorena will clip him, and who knows, he might find himself in trouble and make this thing look a little Daniel Dubois-ish. But I think Huni coming in, the younger guy, great conditioning, fast hands, lots of volume, I think he's going to come out on top in this fight. 
What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways that you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Man, I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this time do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And we'll definitely see you next time.